And, of course, when Obama came on the scene, I mean, he used social media brilliantly. Is that something that the Tea Party uh, has to uh, really get into as well? I mean, Sarah Palin has been tremendous. I mean, you, you, you know, she tweets anything out or uh, posts anything on Facebook. It's, it's news everywhere. Uh, don't more people like-minded with Governor Palin have to get into that realm, too, because we know the left is doing it very well? I think so. I also think that it's going to depend on the grassroots uh, organizations on the ground. And one of the things the left has done in Wisconsin, which we really need to be worried about nationwide, is they've used and abused the prosecutorial powers in the Wisconsin government to frighten conservative movements away from participating in legal political advocacy. That's what the IRS tried to do on a national scale against the Tea Party. I write about that in the book uh, in Wacko Birds. I go through the whole IRS scandal. And I say, look, one of the reasons the Tea Party is struggling is because it was repressed. I mean, if we saw this, we took a step back from this and just looked at any third world country and said, oh, look, this is what they're doing. We call it repressing the opposition. I mean, we'd make no bones about it. We, we would say this is not characteristic behavior of a free society, of a, of a real democracy. This is not what democracies do. They don't use the power of the tax man to destroy their political opponent. And yet that's what Obama did, by all indications. And the same is happening in Wisconsin, using the prosecutorial powers under what's called the John Doe statute, where the targets of a criminal investigation aren't really allowed to talk about the investigation, and a lot of it remains sealed. Mounting evidence is building up that that this was a politically motivated prosecution from the start, and it has silenced conservative organizations. So Walker's going to have to depend on those organizations that are still able to do the work. Those are more directly political organizations. This is not going to be one of those sort of 501c4 soft money type of elections. This is really going to be about uh, the boots on the ground in terms of just straight up political party canvassing. And I think that's going to start to pull through for him because I really do think that the voters of Wisconsin are better off than they were four years ago, and they know it. And there's going to be a lot of outside money in the race, and Walker may even be behind there. Um, but his opponent has stumbled a bit. She's bound to plagiarize some of her campaign platform from other Democratic governors. And I think his reelection would send a resounding message to the rest of the country. But you're right. We've got to get more outside support in there to do that. And you mentioned Sarah Palin. She is really one of the few nationwide leaders the Tea Party has had. And although she doesn't play a direct leadership role, she is very much a rallying point for Tea Party members. In fact, in the book, in Wacko Birds, I describe how in the early days of the Tea Party, you could almost describe the Tea Party as a Sarah Palin fan club because a lot of the people who got involved felt that she had been given a raw deal and their activism was in part motivated by a desire to put things right about the way she was treated and the fact that she was never listened to. But today, you know, with Joe Biden sticking his foot in, the mouth, in his mouth every other day on foreign policy, I'm reminded just how well Sarah Palin did in her debate against him, and yet the media scored it a win for Biden. You know, and a lot of people just feel this terrible injustice was done to her and to the country in the way the media spun that entire election. So that's how the Tea Party uh, really rallied in the early days, and it's still how it rallies today. So uh, she does a lot of positive work for the Tea Party for conservative candidates, and, and there are others as well. The Tea Party needs more of those kinds of leaders, and it needs people who are leaders in Washington, too, to go there and, and, and make the case and also stand up when opportunities arise and take leadership positions. And Governor Palin provides a blurb in your book, has endorsed uh, Wacko Birds, The Fall and Rise of the Tea Party by Joel Pollack. And uh, what does that mean to you, Joel, having uh, Governor Palin on board here behind your book? You know, she's an outstanding human being. I had the opportunity to visit with her and her family um, up in Alaska a few weeks ago, and they're just the nicest people on, on God's green earth. You know, they're really just hospitable, wonderful. Um, they have friends over all the time. They're very open. They're welcoming of strangers. They're just wonderful people who I think have been very badly treated by the media and have, and have stayed alive through all of it. And, you know, they, they are who they are. What you see is what you get. They, they are Americans who really made it, who, who maintain a positive outlook on life despite everything that's happened to them. They've succeeded, I think, beyond their wildest dreams, and, and they're living embodiments of the American dream. That's precisely why they drive the left so crazy, because the left wants you to believe that the country is troubled, that women with kids can't make it in the workplace or in politics without special dispensations, that you can't balance uh, the environment with hunting and use of resources, which Palin believes passionately in. So... They're, they're kind of a living counterexample to the negative thesis about America and about Western civilization. And it's one of the reasons I think conservatives like them so much. 
Yeah, and believing in American exceptionalism, too, which so many in the Tea Party also enjoy. Wacko Birds, The Fall and Rise of the Tea Party. Joel Pollock, we appreciate it. How can people find out more about the book and get their hands on it? You can go straight to Amazon and just search for Wacko Birds, or you can go to wacko-birds.com. All right, and I guess the most pressing issue in this country, at least for you and me, whether it's Tea Party or a Democrat or a Republican, can anybody do anything about our Chicago Bears right now, Joel? Because I thought we were in for a better season, and you know, I'm getting a little nervous here after five games. You know, I think this season, unfortunately, is, is not a winner. Um, <laughs> I, look, I look at the Bears. I'm going to be honest here. I like Jay Cutler, but I think the team has – and, and, you know, you could say this in a positive way. The team has really shown it can commit to a franchise quarterback. Yeah. And that's great because we played musical quarterbacks for 25 years. Yep. But, you know, I just don't think he has the leadership to push the team to a win. I just don't think so. You know, and he, days like this, you remember that NFC Championship game where, where he was riding a bike after coming out with, a, with an injury um, rather than insisting on going back in there. And, you know, you don't want a guy to get hurt, but – he just doesn't seem to be able to summon the, the, the leadership that the Bears really need to get ahead. Uh, you look at how they lost today. I mean, touchdown pass to Greg Olson, you know, former Bear. Mm-hmm. You know, Olson basically brings back the glory days when you had Erlocker, you had Hester. I mean, the Bears, we'll look back at those those teams from, from five or six years ago and say that was one of the most talented group of people ever to be on a team anywhere in the NFL. And they just couldn't get it done. And, you know, I don't know if Lovey Smith was the guy to take him there. But, you know, Jay Cutler has, has had a lot of chances. Um, I think he's had a storied career. I think he'll be remembered fondly by Chicago fans. But I think the idea that we were going to build a whole team around this guy when he was not failing, when he was failing to kind of show that sort of leadership, I, I think you've got to really question it now and, and see if the Bears have, can, can look forward, um, you know, to, to a new quarterback, to, to fresh blood, to basically rethinking their game plan, going back to traditional Bears defense, and getting creative on offense uh, w- w- with the dynamic leader of an Aaron Rodgers type of capability. It's disappointing. It's, 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 it's fun, but, you know, I think they've got to start looking forward. All those years, right, of us uh, saying, well, the defense is okay. We're going to score any points. Now, these last two years, when you have Marshall and Bennett and Jeffrey, you say, all right, we'll get 20 something points, but can we tackle anyone? I mean, it's a little better than last year so far, but we'll see. But uh, a lot of fish to fry. Uh, certainly, uh, that's from the fun part of, uh, of the NFL. And uh, But uh, Wacko Birds, The Fall and Rise of the Tea Party. That's the book by Joel Pollock, who's just tremendous. Uh, Amazon, check it out. You can uh, pick it up there. And of course, you could follow Joel on Breitbart.com with all of his great work there. Joel Pollock, thank you so much, sir, and good luck with the book and everything. You're welcome here anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Joel Pollock on the Palin Update. Again, check out Amazon.com to get your hands on Wacko Birds, The Fallen Rise of the Tea Party, and for more on Joel, visit Breitbart.com. This past week, Governor Palin campaigned in Louisiana for Mama Grizzly Radio contributor Rob Manus. You've heard Manus right here the last few months on the Palin Update with his segment, Strapping with the Colonel. Well, he's locked in a big race for U.S. Senate, and he is Palin Powered. After stumping for Manus, Palin wrote on social media, quote, It was so nice to be back in the bayou, campaigning for a great patriot, true conservative, and proven fighter for America, Colonel Rob Manus. Most enjoyable was visiting with Rob's supporters, who see in him what the rest of America will be blessed to see, his selfless drive towards solutions, and his positive conservative message that resonates not just in Louisiana, but all across this great nation. Rob's momentum has really got the permanent political class scared back in D.C. The Democrats obviously dread Rob's inevitable momentum building as the November 4th U.S. Senate election draws near. But now the GOP establishment is starting to go nuts. The professional politicians are snapping at the colonel like a hungry gator. They're spreading all sorts of anonymous bunk to try to get him out of the race, mocking his humble public servant's heart, and, well, you know the game they play by now. Hey, with all due respect, good old boys in the GOP machine, after you've served America for 32 years wearing our nation's uniform, after being in combat, after sacrificing as much as Rob and his family have in the name of true public service for our country, and after you've literally fought for our freedom like Rob has, then... You can kick your feet up on your comfy desk in some swank office and talk to us about who gets to run for office and who doesn't. 
unquote. Palin also featured a great video of Manus with alligators and discussed a trip to a restaurant that serves up some great gator dishes. Colonel Rob Manus, a super candidate for Senate in Louisiana, and he has the Mama Grizzly in his corner. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA, and visit SarahPalinChannel.com.